this is part of a video series discussing some of the insider traits found within the gaming world, as well as some ways we can protect ourselves and others from the potential dangers that online gaming can bring. How have you noticed games evolving over the years since when you were a youth, maybe playing the arcade games that you put a quarter in and, you know, you were done after a period of time to what kids are playing today? Yeah, so in the past, absolutely. Uh, you put a quarter in a video game and, you know, you played your three guys and you were done. But now, because there are so many sport-based games, games can go on for quite a while. Or you may have a game where you're developing a character uh, over a period of time, and that can last quite a long time with lots of play hours. So because games have evolved over the years, and because you have youth and adults playing in the same arena now... Um, what are some things that parents need to be aware of and have discussions about with their children uh, because of the evolution of these games? So you don't know who you're playing with and you, you know your, your children do not either. So that is a big concern. You could be playing against somebody very young or somebody very old. You could be playing with somebody with a fine personality. You could be playing with somebody relatively rough. So parents certainly need to educate their children. Number one, you don't know who you're playing with, regardless of what their name looks like or appears to be. And number two, you have to take everybody with a grain of salt and be careful with what you see and who you engage with. Obviously, if a kid can feel comfortable enough to say, yeah, I know there was a guy talking to me today and I didn't like what he was saying, you can start a conversation about, you know what, you don't have to engage people or, you know, let's look at profanity filters for you or, you know, let's be safe and here's a couple things you can do. I mean, honestly, parent engagement is your biggest tool. One of the things that kids have at their hands and they know how to use it too is an ignore so if somebody is talking to me and i just don't want to talk to them for whatever reason maybe i'm just not interested or maybe they're harassing me i can ignore a particular player and never hear from them again well when we grew up janine there was a single telephone hanging in the wall in the kitchen Yes. And your parents <laughs> knew exactly what you were talking to and, and what, what you were saying. And, you know, yeah. so I think the same thing could be done with the computer. Um, you know, keep your kids online activities within view. Um, that's going to keep them safe. That's going to curb their activity. They're certainly going to make better choices knowing somebody's looking over their shoulder. Yeah. So not letting them just play in their room with the door shut. That's probably a bad practice. So another hot topic is talking about gaming and gambling. And even as we're looking at sports betting, we're seeing lots of commercials. It's really being talked about more and more. Um, what are some of the gambling opportunities that can happen within gaming that parents need to be aware of and that I think um, young people need to be aware of so that they don't go down the path of developing a problem with gambling. So you might not understand how some of this stuff works, but within games, um, there are some what we call loot boxes. And loot boxes are a way to enhance your character. Uh, maybe not with an ability, but you know, with a special skin or a cool look for their weapon or whatever. So what you want to be aware of is, is that when a child um, opens up a loot box, there's a percent chance that something's going to be good. Maybe there's a, a common item or even an uncommon item, but, you know, all these kids are looking for rare items, something that makes them stand out. Um, and every time they open that loot box, there's, you know, another chance for a super cool or rare thing. Um, so in a way that is gambling in the sense that, um, here I am continuously pulling a lever, hoping for, you know, three bars and a good payout. Well, kids are doing the same thing in their games, opening loot boxes, hoping for that good payout. And it certainly does mimic gambling, doesn't it? Yeah. And I, you know, I hear some of the myths that you hear adults who have a gambling problem share of, you know, developing those false beliefs that I'm really getting good at this. Like, you know, I know some tricks or some ways to kind of beat the system and, you know, win at this, which gambling is always chance. It's always 50-50 chance. You're not really running into getting good at gambling, but that's a myth that people can develop in their head. So um, that's my fear is that especially for young ones who you know, their their brain's not fully developed yet. They don't have that, that frontal lobe, which is responsible for reasoning and decision-making, fully developed. 
which is why young people need guidance um, and help in those areas so that, you know, they don't go down a path that's dangerous. Um, but we also have a lot of kids, too, that know it's volume. So if I open a ton of loot boxes, surely I'm going to get something worth some value. And, you know, I hear lots of parents complaining, hey, my kid spent uh, quite a bit of money um, in, you know, this game or that. And it's disheartening, but you know what? You need to have us talk with your kid that, you know, some of this stuff is just like gambling a one in a million shot and your chances of actually scoring big are very slim. Talking then about that spending of money, because I have heard that parents saying, I didn't realize my son or my daughter was spending X amount of dollars on gaming and they didn't realize it till the end of the month when their credit card bill came in. What are some ways that they could kind of curb that spending with their children? All right, first of all, talk to your kids. Let them know that you are spending real money. This is mom and dad's grocery bill, house payment, whatever it is. Uh, let them know that, my gosh, there needs to be a limit. Um, and if you have trouble setting a limit with your kid, I suggest getting like a reloadable Visa card. Um, you know what? If you want to let your kids spend, I say knock yourself out, but that road little reloadable visa card will certainly give you um, some rain over just how much they spend and how often. And if they go crazy, then you know the only money they've spent is the money you've put there. And maybe even that money that's on that reloadable visa card is something they earn. So that way they have that real value of money. So it's not just you know hitting a button and, and playing a game and it disappears, but if they had to really earn that money or that was their birthday money or Christmas money or whatever it may be, and it's gone in three seconds because they've spun the wheel or whatever, um, tried for the loot box, they can really kind of feel that pain, if you will, of, of loss from spending that money. Yeah, that's a good teachable moment. So also looking at um, when we game and, and the games that are played, um, it can release a lot of endorphins in our brains, which are... Um, chemicals in our brains that can really, you know, make us feel good. So we can, we get endorphins from lots of different things, but it's that feel good chemical in your brain. And they say that that feel good chemical can be somewhat addictive to your brain. So your brain gets used to those endorphins over and over and wants more and more of them. So I've heard it said that it's really helpful then to really vary your gaming because it is a high endorphin activity with low endorphin activities. Can you talk a little bit about that? So again, you just need to vary your screen time with other activities. Um, I think that the high endorphin activities um, can become addictive. Um, so obviously if you have lots of flashing colors, your eyes, your ears, or you're tuned into a game for way too long, um, it's just a dangerous thing. Um, you're just going to want to function in any other capacity. But if you can, you know, trade up video games for, you know, something else, um, I, again, I think you're just going to be better off in the long run. So I have heard of um, youth who got into the trap of really having a problem with their gaming where they felt like they couldn't stop. They would stay up all throughout the night gaming. Um, they, I've, I've heard of college students missing classes um, to continue to game. They, they really knew that they had a problem because they really couldn't stop. They tried to stop and they could not. So if you know of anyone that has that problem or if you suspect maybe your child is starting to develop that problem, don't be afraid to reach out for help. There's help out there. There's people that specialize in, you know, addiction and even gaming addiction and gambling addiction that could really um, help them along the way to get the help that they need so that they can function well and be healthy. Also within the description of this video, I've included um, online surveys that I've created both for parents of youth who game as well as youth who game. So please take a minute and complete the surveys. They're only, they only take about a minute or two. Um, and I did include a part in there if you wanted to put your email address and you wanna see some of the results of the survey, I'm happy to share that with you. So today we have my good friend Brad here. Um, he's going to tell us a little bit about the esports teams and um, his inner <laughs> the sport ball teams. <laughs> Agreed. Yes. Agreed. <laughs>